welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, I review one of my favorite always-on lenses, and that is the vintage 50mm Leica Summicron Type 4, produced between 1979 and 1994. I recently got a chance to spend a longer period of time in the Princeton area, with easy access to cities like New York, Philadelphia, and many other interesting places. And of course, being a photographer, but also a YouTuber, I debated which kind of cameras and lenses to bring and potentially review. And I finally settled on the Leica M6 with the 50mm Summicron that we are discussing here today. A lens that I've purchased originally for my 30th birthday, which is almost eight years ago. And I feel like, okay, it's finally time to properly review it here on the channel. I've had enough time to shoot it with shooting portraits, documentary styles, tweet shots, and so on. So now is the time to share some images, um, especially from the New York and Princeton area time, um, and to take a closer look at this lens. And why should you care? Because if you are interested in this kind of lens, like a Summicron 50 millimeter, what is interesting about this particular one is that if you would go to a store today and purchase a non-APO, like a Summicron, you would get exactly the same optical design introduced in 1979 with this Type 4 lens. And um, as it's stated proudly in the Leica pocketbook here, um, the, this version of the Summicron has been in production for more than 40 years, indicating its high level of performance. And this should be reason enough to take a closer look at this lens together. So let's look at the history in the different versions first. The Leica Summicron is a true reference lens and many other manufacturers looked for lights and then later Leica for what might they be introducing next in terms of a standard compact 50 millimeter lens. And of course here the compactness is important, a compact form factor combined with really high performance. So it's one thing to battle each other on that level of who gets the best and widest aperture lens out there and it has best performance when shot wide open, but then there's also this segment of who gets the best standard lens out there with a good combination of an inexpensive production but still really high optical performance. And here the Summicron was always kind of standing out as the true reference lens. The Summicron was first introduced in 1953 and um, is quote widely regarded as the first modern lens with significantly improved performance due to improved design methods and improved glass types being researched by lights and others unquote. Yet the lens was quickly updated in 1956 with the Summicron Type 2 which was produced until 1968. Type 3 of the lens was introduced in 1969 and designed by Walter Mandler. It came with new glass types and a six elements and five groups design. And this lens already benefited from increased computer power and software and successfully combined improved uh, performance with lower production costs. In 1979, we finally see the lens that we talk about today, and this is the Summicron Type 4. Again, it was designed by the legendary Walter um, Mandler, and it was based on his doctoral study in which he analyzed the double Gauss design. Quote, this new design has five plane surfaces and the curvatures of the others grouped into four classes, making manufacturing easier. This same glass developed by lights and also made possible the Noctilux F150 millimeter to be designed without a spherical surfaces." Unquote. This type four of the lights like a Summicron introduced in 1979 is interesting because it shares the same optical design with the successor, the type five, which was introduced in 1994 and built all the way up until 2013 when it was replaced by the Leica Summicron 50mm um, APO um, as spherical. 
And optically, these two versions, uh, so the Type 4 and the Type 5, come exactly with the same design, so um, six elements and four groups and um, eight aperture blades. Cosmetically, the two differ a little bit, as became apparent to me when I recently got a chance to do a photo walk with Marc Rebellier, and he owns the 50mm Somicron Type 5. And the main differences are that the Type 4 has the legendary focusing tab, while the Type 5 doesn't have that. But on the other hand, the Type 5 has a built-in lens hood that can be extracted. Uh, which is quite convenient of course, um, but it also changes the form factor a little bit and makes it slightly heavier. Please note that the early versions of the Type 4 were made in Canada and only the later ones um, starting at about 1991 were made in Germany. Around 3,250 units um, of the early production models came with something special, the so-called Tiger Paw focusing tab. Um, as you can see here and it's basically an outwardly curved focus lever and allegedly these lenses don't have quite the same coating and produce a bit more flare than later ones but of course i cannot testify to that most importantly if you are in the market for that lens i double checked with um, somebody here at a local leica store who um, yeah confirmed to me that if you don't purchase the apo somicron but go for the normal still expensive leica 50 millimeter somicron today you get the exact optical design um, as here in the one introduced in 1979. Um, so, of course, that is interesting if you don't want to break the bank and get something new, but go for vintage, then here, please take a look at these lenses. Now take a closer look at the build quality and the lens design. The Type 4 Somicron is a double gauss design very similar to the um, Carl Zeiss Planar 50mm f2. In this particular case here we have a six elements and four groups design with no spherical surfaces and no floating elements and a characteristic golden brown coating. The Somicron Type 4 comes with eight aperture blades which are rounded and not straight and the aperture ring features half stops and has no play and the smallest aperture setting is f16. The lens comes with yellow distance markers um, uh, to indicate feet and white ones for meters and these come engraved in the characteristic Leica font and the markings also indicate the depth of field per aperture which is particularly convenient when shooting street shots and guessing the distance to your subject and you can always see okay what will be in focus at f8 or f11 and so on. The build quality of the Somicron is excellent. Uh, the all metal construction gives a solid feel without being too heavy. At um, 195 grams, it's still pretty good. The lens came in black or chrome, and Type 4 always comes with a focus tab. Initially, the Tiger Claw that I mentioned before, um, and later on, the regular focus tab is shown here. As usual, the minimum focusing distance is 0.7 meters and there is no infinity lock, unlike the first two versions of the Sumicron that still had that heritage of the Sumitar and other older lenses. The filter thread is 39 millimeters, which is also um, quite convenient because it matches a lot of other lenses in the Leica setup and you can, um, as Greg did for instance, mainly purchase 39 millimeter filters and then get the fitting lenses um, in the lineup. Um, and then have a really nice um, lens and filter lineup and yeah, it's fully compatible and yeah, of course easier to use like that. 
Almost all of the lenses are made for the M Bayonet, except for the special silver chrome uh, version with um, screw mount that was introduced in 2001 for the Japanese market um, for use on older Leicas as well. They are very special editions, for instance, a platinum version for 150 Jahre Optik and a silver chrome retro edition um, limited to 1000 units, uh, marking the 50th anniversary um, of the very first 50mm Somicron lens. Um, of course, a lot of Type 4 and also Type 5 Somicron lenses were part of special editions with matching cameras, so they are available in all sorts of colors. So there's also a Safari green one or a titanium version available. Um, so just, yeah, as is common for these kinds of lenses, either 35mm or 50mm, they typically show up in these special editions. What about the image quality and the results? Um, from my perspective, the lens produces a really timeless classic look that is neither particularly modern nor vintage, for lack of a better word. The Sumicron delivers good contrast, very natural, albeit slightly muted colors, I would say, and really a textbook bokeh uh, that, at least to my eyes, looks simply fantastic. There's no distortion in the frame and only minimal vignetting when shot wide open and there are hardly any chromatic aberrations. The Sumicron offers sharpness across almost the entire frame when shot wide open at f2. Um, there's some slight smearing towards the corners of the frames that immediately disappears once you stop down to f2.8 or m f4. And um, when shooting against the light, of course, there without a hood, there's of course um, some flaring and you also get some sun stars in there. But of course, these can be used creatively. And once you use a hood, of course, that problem disappears as well. So technically, this lens is close to perfect, which is also probably one of the reasons why Leica kept it in its lineup with the same optical design for such a long time. Subjectively, I feel like this is a perfect lens, um, a wonderful standard lens to have that creates a beautiful bokeh, a wonderful um, transition between the in-focus area and out-of-focus area, some kind of 3D pop, especially for portraits, and still a really nice sharpness for more documentary work where you want to have sharpness across the entire frame or also street shots without being overly sharp, if you know what I mean. So at least to my eyes, the APO Somicron feels sometimes too sharp and too overcorrected, and here you just get this very classic, timeless look that is sharp and to the point and nice color, but not like overdoing it in any way. So for my money, this is the perfect standard lens. Uh, I can highly, highly recommend it.
What about the handling and my personal impressions? Um, well, for me, it is the ultimate 50 millimeter standard lens that offers the highest optical performance in the smallest package. Um, it is a joy to use on any Leica M camera. And what I personally particularly like is um, the focusing tap and the muscle memory associated to it. So that is exclusive, of course, to the type four lens that you have this focusing tap. And to me, at least focusing becomes almost as fast as autofocus because it just know where it's roughly at. And then in combination with, of course, the rangefinder patch, it is super quick to focus. Um, of course, um, looking at the optical design and all that, there are less expensive 50 millimeter lenses and alternatives from Focklenser and also um, Carl Zeiss, especially the 50 millimeter F2 Carl Zeiss Planar lens offers a very similar optical design and value proposition for sometimes a lower cost. But if you want the true Leica experience and a true Leica lens, um, I would argue this is a really good investment piece. And I've made the plunge in 2015, as I've mentioned, um, for my 30s birthday, um, and I purchased it for a little bit less than 1000 euro. Back then, also not the cheapest version that I could buy, but one from an official Leica store here in Munich. So slightly um, more expensive, but in really good condition. And I never regretted that purchase. And I would argue um, the prices are stable or even going up over time. And I would also look at a metaphor from the fashion um, industry where people often talk about cost per wear um, to basically justify more expensive purchases that they would yeah, wear for a longer period of time, like a decade or longer. So if you look at a very well-made Burberry coat, for instance, that costs you a lot of money in the moment of time where you purchase it, but then you wear it for a long period of time and you can yeah, probably use it and even pass it on to future generations. Then of course the cost per wear goes down significantly. And taking that same metaphor and applying it to photographic gear, I would argue that this lens definitely paid off because it's my go-to lens. It's an always on lens on my Leica M6 and I've definitely taken most of my images through the lens. And if I would apply a cost per shot or cost per wear metaphor to this here as well, um, it's definitely um, an, an, a really cheap investment and it was a very good investment um, in the first place. So um, looking at the pros and cons, the pros are basically fantastic build quality, fantastic optical performance, a really nice handling that offers, especially for the Type 4, um, a quick um, yeah, focusing mechanism that is almost as quick as autofocus to me, and a really smart investment as well, especially if you look for these 1980s um, Type 4 Somicrons, sometimes made in Canada or mostly made in Canada, then later on made in Germany. Um, these are really good and really fantastic as a go-to lens. If you're like me and prefer 50 millimeter, it might make a lot of sense to go for the higher price. And you're still paying significantly less than if you would go to um, a Leica store today and purchase it new. And the only downside that I see is basically the price. Um, but if you are like me and yeah, want to go for a true Leica lens and have that focusing tab, then it's the perfect choice in my opinion. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and my review of the 50 mm Somicron Type 4, a timeless lens with a classic look that I can highly recommend as an investment piece and always on standard lens. 
If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel, Jules Greg, and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.